The work that this assembly does matters to us as governments and matters to the people of East Africa. We must therefore remain focused on what is at stake, committed to complete the outstanding work and determined to do our very best at all times when called upon to serve the people of our region. Peace, stability, and security must remain our foremost concern because they are the foundations that underlie all pursuit of growth, development, and prosperity. A peaceful, stable, and secure East Africa is a competitive and prosperous East Africa. As we work and as we continue to work on such challenges to the growth of trade and investment, as persistent on non-tariff barriers, distracting and costly trade disputes, conflicting tax regimes, weak enforcement and inadequate resources, we must also take seriously the fundamental shortcomings to our agenda that is low involvement of the private sector, even as we prepare to get and stay on top of emerging threats in the digital space, as well as climate change. The ESC e-passport is now internationally recognized, while several member states now permit citizens to travel using the national identity cards. Visa fees for cross-border movements have mostly been eliminated, and cross-border communities now enjoy free movement. Students can enroll and transfer with greater ease the regional to, and, and regional institutions now implement mutual recognition agreements for various professional qualifications. The assembly should facilitate the convergence of criteria for macroeconomic governance and provide for the harmonization of both fiscal and monetary policies. The fourth pillar of East African integration, the political federation, depends on effective cooperation in the fields of political affairs, regional peace and security, as well as defense cooperation. The transitional model for our federation is already in place in the form of the East African Political Confederation, under which we have been able to deploy the East African Community Regional Force, for example, to restore peace and security in Eastern DRC, while other achievements under the transitional model include the Chief Justices Forum to strengthen the rule of law, enhance access to justice, and facilitate the evolution of a distinct East African jurisprudence. Similarly, the other platforms have been established to enable progressive engagement between national institutions through the exchange of information, skills, and capacity, and developing common regional standards in such diverse fields as good governance, election management, and human rights institutions 
and institutions that govern anti-corruption. We now have in place protocols on defense as well as peace and security together with the ESC Mutual Defense Pact, the ESC Early Warning Mechanism, Protocol on Combating Illegal Drug Trafficking and ESC Interreligious Council, and a framework for conducting public participation on the establishment of the political federation, which has already been concluded in Kenya, in Uganda, and in Burundi. And we already made a decision last year in Arusha that that process must be concluded in the other uh, remaining states by June this year, so that we can have a way forward. And I want to tell you, when this exercise was conducted in Kenya, it received overwhelming endorsement by the people of Kenya. Our common agenda, therefore, is to set out optimal policies and strategies which unite us firmly in the singular pursuit of positive transformation in the political and economic, social and cultural, research and development, as well as technology and innovation, including defense and security, and also the legal and judicial sectors of our society. It is fair to say that much of our efforts cannot proceed, let alone succeed, without the loyal contribution and hard work of our community's legislative organs. This organ of IALA, as well as the respective parliaments. This assembly accentuates the direct linkage between common regional and specific intra-member state policies by performing the vital and simultaneous functions of embedding regional integration agenda at the heart of domestic policymaking, while also ensuring that the ESC represents, articulates, and projects the interests of member states, as well as the entire collectivity of our community. Our customs union is on the move, with this assembly creating legislative frameworks to establish a common external tariff, uniform customs rules and procedures, and common rules of origin. And I want to congratulate members here for being patriotic to ESC and making sure these instruments are in place. These frameworks also provide for the elimination of non-tariff barriers and the implementation of a single customs territory, one-stop border posts, as well as the facilitation of the development of regional and national trade information portals. For example, in a couple of weeks, President Museveni and I will be launching the uh, one-stop border post in Swam, a border between Kenya and Uganda, complete with a road connecting both countries that was sourced by, for, by funding that was collectively undertaken by the government of Kenya and the government of Uganda. Similarly, the Assembly has provided the framework to conclude the Comesa ESC SADC Tripartite Free Trade Area Agreement. The signing of the agreement establishes the African Continental Free Trade Area also and the adoption of the ESC e-commerce strategy. As you are aware, the bringing together of the Tripartite Agreement will bring 27 countries into one common market with a GDP of approximately $750 billion. That will make it possible for East Africa, parts of North Africa, and the whole of South Africa to trade together and to eliminate trade barriers that consistently stand in the way in our quest to enhance and expand business trade, enterprise in our region. Our people's journey to a prosperous, competitive, secure, stable, and politically united East Africa entails 
the implementation of policies and establishment of institutions under the four well-known pillars of our integration, namely a customs union, a common market, monetary union, and a political federation. The instruments and frameworks needed to bring into operation our semi-autonomous institutions, delineate our areas of cooperation, and attend to the pillars of integration are promulgated under the exclusive mandate of this assembly, which has demonstrated exemplary dedication to its legislative function. Consensus deference to important lessons from the history of our regional integration efforts and a vigilant commitment to deliver a robust architecture for the successful delivery of an ambitious program of action for our community. By dint of a consistent drive to implement our collective vision for integration, this assembly has enabled us to overcome the shortcomings which rendered the first East Africa community so vulnerable that it ultimately collapsed, and to make significant progress on each pillar of integration, thereby making ESC a resilient, dynamic, progressive region on the threshold of historic transformation. The evolving global peace and security problems have compounded the challenges of our time in Africa. Statistically, as of 2023, over 37 million people had been forcefully displaced in Africa. Six countries accounted for 64% of the forced displacements on the continent. And as at September 2023, 121 million people are facing severe acute food security in selected countries in Africa. In the period between February 2019 and February 2024, conflict fatalities from selected African countries reached 208,000. Four of the top 10 countries facing severe acute food insecurity are in the Horn of Africa. The statistics in West and Central Africa are also daunting. The number of schools closed in these regions reached over 13,250 schools, impacting an estimated 2.5 million children. And roughly around June 2023 alone, that period alone, there were about 7,800 primary schools that were closed, either destroyed or they had become military centers or they had become rescue centers. Uh, and again, almost 1.4 million children in the Sahel region in particular were out of school. We don't know when they will get back to school. The israel gather conflict and the war in Ukraine are garnering more attention than the conflicts in the Africa continent. While the peace and security situation in our continent is of great concern as well. We have conflicts in the Horn, Great Lakes, Sahel, and the West African regions. These conflicts have affected millions of people, including children, women, and the elderly. And according to statistics, over 15 African countries have been in conflict in the recent past and this has resulted in the displacement of over 40 million people. Your Excellencies, how can leaders of this great continent of Africa reconcile the world's spotlight on the distant conflicts with the stark reality that our own people suffer in silence, their plight is relegated to the periphery of global consciousness? The challenges 
that, fa that face us are not merely of conflict resolution, but of moral imperative. The adverse impact of these insecurities cannot go unnoticed. We should all commit to promoting a shared vision for peace and security for holistic and sustainable development of our continent. There's an urgent need for our continent to strike a balance between global solidarity and the dire need to prioritize continental cooperation towards peace, security, and development in Africa. Therefore, although acknowledging the interconnectedness of conflicts and crises globally and regionally, I also implore all of us to note that in the shadow of global conflicts, let us not forget the silent suffering of our own people in Africa. Solidarity and unity will guarantee peace and security for the much needed trade and economic development of the continent.